wins its 13th national championship. Sunday. And so here we are in the company of a 101,000 plus fan base. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS this evening. The defending national champion Alabama Crimson Tide against the champions of two years ago, the Gators of Florida. Settle down, me. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. Let me share a couple of numbers with you just to give you some sense of how good these guys really are. Over the last three years, both Alabama and Florida have won 30 and lost only two apiece. Obviously, they both got a national title. So, round three. Well, it's only October, and all SEC or national aspirations will remain viable no matter who wins tonight. But there are dozens of compelling reasons to watch and enjoy this one. Right now, let's go down to Tracy Wolfson, who's live with Nick Saban. Thanks, Vern. Coach, you said your young defense was intimidated early against Arkansas. How did you address that coming into this one? Well, what we want our players to do is focus not on what they gain or what they lose in the game, but what they have to do to play well. Right, and play their best football and play at every play in the game, one play at a time, and that makes it simple for them. And that's what we need to do tonight against a good Florida team. Florida's number one priority is stopping the run, so what do you need to do offensively to keep them off balance? Well, we got to have balance. I mean, we got to be able to throw it. We got good skill players. Greg's done a good job all year, and that's going to be our plan. Thanks a lot. Good luck today. Going back to you. All right, Tracy, I think Nick Saban sat in our production meeting <laughs> and wanted to emphasize <laughs> The running game, well, he's got a couple of pretty good guys to handle. Yeah, Vern, what's the old saying about life? Uh, there's no sure thing. Well, in college football, there may be, and it may be right here, the running game and the running backs for Alabama. Mark Ingram right. and Trent Richardson are do-it-all guys. They run with power, speed, they block, they catch the ball. They are the backbone of this football team. And as Nick said, to run the ball to be successful, they're going to have to run it against a very good Florida defense, but those two guys are almost a sure thing. Well, Florida got off to a really slow start offensively, but they seem to have found themselves last week in the win over Kentucky. Brantley and Trey Burton, does it remind you of anybody? Yeah, it really is. It, it, I think it's a trip back to 2006. It was Florida's national championship team when Chris Leak got the help from a freshman, Tim Tebow, for the short yardage pack and ran it all the way to the national championship. Well, insert Trey Burton for Tim Tebow and John Brantley's the passing quarterback. It's going to look exactly like 2006 on offense. It is a crystal clear evening. 76 degrees, slight breeze out of the northwest, and the humidity very mild at 30%. Alabama leads the series by six games, and you know they uh, 
it seems appropriate on this 35th anniversary to the precise night of the Thrilla and Manila when Ali beat Frazier and took the lead two games to one to win his rematch. <laughs> You know what? What did Mark Ingram tell us? If they feel half as bad as we felt last year when we faced them in the SEC Championship, we're in for a tussle. Florida won the toss and deferred. Alabama will get the ball, and this one will be taken by Trent Richardson at the four-yard line. He's already returned one. Oh, baby, did he take a pop at the 20-yard line. D. Finley, number 13, was a part of it. And Jelani Jenkins, the linebacker, initiated the hit. Well, Trent Richardson is one of those big return guys I lot Darren McFadden years ago for Arkansas, and that time it was met by linebacker strength against strength on the kickoff. Greg McElroy, undefeated, as you know, I think, as a starter both at Alabama and at South Lake Carroll in Texas. 34-0 as a starting quarterback. Hand off, Ingram. Got about three out near the 23-yard line. Let's check the Alabama offense, presented by Chick-fil-A. What do you do? do? Carpenter, Warmack, Lejos, Jones, and D.J. Fluker at right tackle. He's a redshirt freshman. Julio Jones, Preston Dial, Mark Ingram, Michael Williams, and Marquise Mays complete the lineup. And Richardson. Here's this one-two punch. Richardson is uh, in the backfield. That's Julio Jones in motion. Florida threatens blitz, and they come. McElroy finds Julio Jones. There's Blahos with a block on Will Hill. Whoa! A very subtle, nice throw by Greg McElroy. Watch him wait as the defensive end is going to take away the throw with the jump and then just calmly sets it to Julio Jones to set up the blocks to the outside. And Leos, the center, gets out there stumbling and bumbling and takes out Will Hill. <laughs> well, his nickname is Barney Rubble. He looked uh, <laughs> late waist then. Here's McElroy. Settles for a short receiver. It's Marquise Mays, number four, with his first catch. Alabama off to a good start. That's a second gain of 14 yards. Let's check the Florida defense. Trento, Hunter, Jay Howard had a great game. He's wearing number 62. We'll tell you more about that. And Duke Lemons, A.J. Jones, Bostic, and Jelani Jenkins. And in the backfield, Janoris Jenkins, Ahmad Black, Will Hill, and Jeremy Brown. First down and 10 across midfield. Ingram's back. This is only his third game of the year. Arthroscopic surgery last week of August, and he missed the first two games. He came back uh, in pretty good style. I think you can see Alabama has started out with a bit of a passing game because Florida is using their big lineup. They have four defensive linemen in, and then at the defensive end slash linebacker, Duke Lemons is playing that linebacker spot. So they basically have four and then a big linebacker on the field for five. Call it their heavy defense, and it is. Second down, McElroy, a little pressure, screen pass. Ingram, loose to the right side, Alabama first down. And, and see, I think this is so smart by Alabama. You have to figure that Justin Tranto and Duke Lemons have spent the whole spring and fall playing defensive line. And now you're asking them to do something a little bit out of sync. Personal as foul. To play. Rough in the passer. Number 99 defense. 15-yard penalty. First foul. Tom Ritter is our referee tonight. The call is against Omar Hunter, number 99 defensive tackle from the Florida Gators. And remember, Alabama is going to invite the defensive line in, and that was almost a step and a half, and he shoved them, but it was a step and a half before he shoved them. Good call. With the penalty, a first down at the 23-yard line. Motion, Lejos goes down. Back to back. Now that'll earn Omar Hunter a spot next to his head coach. Next. Dead ball. <laughs> Offside. 99 defense. Five-yard penalty. 
first half. That's Dan McCarney, assistant head coach, defensive line coach. You get a roughing the passer, and then you get wired, and you jump off sides. You go next, and Lawrence Marsh comes in the game. Dan McCarney, lecturer, first and five. Richardson's on the field. This is the, the pistol formation. Ingram right side. They go to the left. Julio Jones. How about that block from Darius Hanks, number 15? That play would have been much more effective had Greg McElroy caught the snap. He bobbled it so much that the timing of the play was really mis misdone. Watch, look, look. He had it. It should have been gone by now. And Greg's very fortunate that they even got back to the line of scrimmage. Took a good block, as Vern called for you. Second down, two. Opening drive of the ball game. Richardson, the running back. And he'll get the handoff. Bounces off his own man, and with a little second effort, carries the ball to the south before Janoris Jenkins makes the tackle number one, and it is a first down. Well, pretty interesting again. Remember the screen pass in the 2009 SEC Championship right before the half. Remember that one that went like 80 yards? 70 yards, yeah, yes. 70 yards. That's yes. close to 70, 80. Uh, Already in this game, we've had two screen passes in this game. It looks like Alabama's going to say, have you learned to stop it? Take a look at the uh, statistics from the Verizon Red Zone. Here's Richardson to the 10-yard line. Second down eight. Well, here's the matchup. Julio against Jenkins. One on one. They believe Florida that they can handle it. That's Janoris Jenkins. Up to bump and run. McElroy. Oh, look, that almost was picked off, and there was a little stumble. Jeremy Brown, who uh, had a pick six last week against Kentucky, had good position on Darius Hanks. And, Vern, I think that's the biggest thing that Florida has going for them in their ability to stop the run is that they believe their corners can match up one-on-one -on -one to the receivers so they can bring that safety into the box. A lot of teams just don't have confidence enough in doing that. Third down, eight. McElroy steps up, still looking. He takes a pop and is downed by Matt Elam, number 22, true freshman, one of several who gets a lot of playing time for the Florida Gators. Yeah, Matt Williams with a highly recruited safety, and to get on the field with these safeties, you gotta be good, but watch him close ground. When you talk to the Alabama coaches, they say one thing that jumps out about Florida is their athletes can close ground on defense. This is Jeremy Shelley, number 90. He is the short yardage field goal for the Alabama Crimson Tide. The hold is down, and Shelley's kick is up. And the Alabama Crimson Tide gets on the scoreboard first with a 28-yard field goal. Jeremy Shelley, 9.28 to go in the opening quarter. This could be fun before we finish. They embarrassed us on national TV last year, and uh, we just can't wait to go out there and get the opportunity to play them again. Florida is a tremendous rivalry for us, but it's not a hated rivalry. It's a right where I think both teams respect each other. We'll play many times anywhere, and it's, it's going to be a physical game. Indeed, it has been in the early going. Yeah, you know, but I think it's when you're six foot five, 315 pounds, and you played four years in the SEC, you can say anything you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robert Clark is one of the deep men now with Mike Gillisley. Normally, Jeffrey Dempse returns kickoffs. But he was a last-minute decision. He will play tonight, but they're not going to chance him returning kicks. Here's Gillisley. 
across the 20 out near the 23. Demps with a sprained foot actually happened to Tennessee and then he uh, kind of irritated it last week against Kentucky. I was on the field and watched very closely him warm up. It was heavily taped and he was favoring it, but he looked like he could do everything he wanted to do, but not like Demps. John Brantley in his first year as a starter. John Brantley the fourth. See his stats for the year. Gets a snap from Pouncey. Here's Demps. Goes right. Tripped up as he gets across the 25. And is tackled near the 28-yard line by Dre Kirkpatrick. Let's uh, introduce you now to the Florida offense presented by Chick-fil-A. On the line, and it is a good one. Gilbert, Johnson, Pouncey, Hurt, and Xavier Nixon. Deontay Thompson, Trey Burton, we list him as an athlete. He's all over the place. Dance, Reed, and more. Now, Gillis Lee and Emmanuel Moody on either side of Brantley. Play action. Trouble. Brantley escapes, and he picks up a first down as he scampers out of bounds. At the 36-yard line, Courtney Upshaw was there to force him out of bounds defensively for Alabama. Darius Chapman and Damian Square up front. Darius, of course, suspended the first two games. Chavis Williams is back in the starting lineup. Nico Johnson, Dante Hightower, and in the secondary, the true freshman Milliner, Mark Barron, Robert Lester, and Dre Kirkpatrick. First down, 10, Florida. Moody alongside Brantley. Option, pitch, Gillisley. Ouch. Ouch. As much as you might like to start slowly if you're Florida and get Brantley ready to play in this football game, I just don't think you can waste possessions. Right. I mean, you just got to run your whole offense. The way Alabama can move the ball this year on offense, I think every possession, if you're calling plays for Florida, you must try to make count. You see, they've got the, the best scoring defense in college football. Here's the dive play again. The handoff goes to Demps, and he's a yard short of the first down at the 45. Well, you got to kind of admire Florida and Demps. If you say you can play, we're going to play you. We're not going to hide you. We're running you right up the middle. Well, of course, he's got world-class speed. Uh, not, tonight you, that's exactly. not tonight he does. Not tonight he Well, that's my point. Yeah. I mean, that's where we were going. He still has good speed, but not world-class speed. Florida's going to go heavy here with an extra lineman, and you can see Alabama adjust with a different defense. Carl Moore goes wide to the right. See a tight end. They have an extra tackle yep. over here. Straight eye formation. Play fake. Brantley got it. Complete out of the left flat. And that will uh, reset the chain with a fresh series of four downs. And it's Trey Burton, number eight, the true freshman out of Venice, Florida. Now, watch this over here. They got a hitch going over here, but the corner bites on the run. It could have just been a long pass. They still run the hitch. But that was a key buster by Florida. They knew Alabama was 100% run on that formation. They played it that way and came up with a play action pass. This is Trey Burton, number eight. Brantley finds Burton. He shake. Oh, he can't shake the tackle. Dre Kirkpatrick, good hands. Well, Trey Kirkpatrick, who started so slow last week against Arkansas and finished with that big interception, makes a big tackle on Trey Burton right there because that could have turned into about an eight or nine yard game. Second down and eight. Burton lines up in four different positions. He's a true freshman, six touchdowns last week in the win over Kentucky. This is Emmanuel Moody. Draw play. Moody cuts right. Stopped at the 50. Flag is down. 
And now it's time, Gary, to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Well, you see Florida decided they needed more in their offense besides the I formation. So with Trey Burton, they're going to find him all over the field, starting out at quarterback, which is he was recruited, fullback, certain plays, wide receiver when he has to, and H-back or tight end every once in a while. So that's going to be a big identification part of the game plan for Alabama. We'll show you later what this Alabama defense has to go through because of the different formations with Trey Burton. Paul was offside Alabama accepted by Florida and that makes it second down and three. Now Burton as a fullback almost. Brantley steps up and there's the completion down the right side. Deontay Thompson number six. Gain of 21. If you talk to the Florida coaches, they say that their offensive line needs to win this football game. Look at the physical Dante Thompson. My goodness. Oh, my. Wow. Ha. He's earned his playing time. Remember, there's been questions about his hands. He said, I got good hands. Don't worry about me. I'll catch it. Just get it to me. But that offensive line for Florida has been moving the defensive line for Alabama. That was a gain of 21. Here's the pitch back to Omarius Hines, number 82, and they clear a lane for him. Pouncey was out there from his center position, number 55, and there was a little more help. There's Mike Pouncey. I, I thought this was going to be a walk-in, and it was a tremendous play by the safety this time for Alabama. I think it was Barron. Watch this. Three blockers in front of him, and Barron slips them all and saves a touchdown on the play. Well, for now, he saves yeah. a touchdown on the play. Uh, no, no wonder Pouncey was jumping up and down. Yes. He missed the block. <laughs> First and goal, 438 to go. First quarter. Blitz. Moody breaks a tackle. Down at the one and a half. Amazing. Florida, everybody wondering this year, boy, what, what, what will we do? We can't move the ball. But first three games, they didn't score in the first quarter. Right. The earth was about to just end in, in Tallahassee. And, excuse me, in Gainesville. But then they found another guy. They added another weapon, and Steve Adazio says, I can call plays now. Steve Adazio, you just saw him. He's the offensive coordinator for the games. And here's Burton. This is the Tebow position. Whoa, he bobbled it. Oh, my. Did he get there? No. Down at the one. It Kerry was, Murphy, number 64. Burn, I was think there. it was a poor snap. I don't know. Did he bobble it, or was it high to his left? If so, it is. Yeah, high into his catch. left. And this has been something that has troubled the Gators. Mike Pouncey's snapping in the shotgun right. since week one. That was very close there. His knee came down, but I think we're going to see another look at this. You know, that's where Trey Burton really showed what type of athlete he is. Basketball player, baseball player, everything. Made the catch and then wiggled his way. The ball got across, but did his knee touch down? It is under review. Looks like the... Uh, his left elbow came down, and then he reached the ball out, it seems to me. Oh, boy, he was right at the same time. Was his forearm down? Kerry Murphy had a hold of him there. Dante Tytower had a hold of him there. Our replay official tonight is Ben Oldham, and uh, he's taking a look at it, lengthy look at it right now. Here's Tom Ritter. After further review, the rules stand that's called on the field, third down. Well, remember week one against Miami of Ohio, Mike Pouncey, John Brantley, all kinds of problems. There's one, two, and against Tennessee, it continued. Brantley.
quickly and Pouncey worked on it at length, but obviously still a problem. 14 fumbles this season, many of them on the snap, and here's Burton. Down. Marcel Darius. Alabama lost a lot of talent on defense last year, but the three guys they return, Barron, Hightower, who was injured most of the year, and Marcel Darius are all as good as there is in college football. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. For the year, the Gators are 7 of 10 on fourth down. This is from the two. It's Burton jump pass. How about intercepted in the end zone? You try too much, Tebow. And kaboom. Nico Johnson. I think Gerald Christensen, number 32, couldn't get out. Watch him being held up right here. I think they were trying to get the ball to the freshman, and he got held up. Yes. Number 11, Jordan Reed is who they were trying to get the ball to there. And the jump. And it would have been up and down because there was nobody to throw to. Darn it. Well, you think Alabama had a hint? Kirby Smart right there is saying, watch the jump pass. Nick Saban's whispering in his ear, watch the jump pass. What did they get? The jump pass. Damian Square over here, number 92. I didn't know if it was going to go to 32 or 11, but Alabama was ready for it. Well, of course, uh, Tim Tebow in his four years at Florida channeled his inner Otto Graham and uh, completed four of those for touchdowns. But this one, the first tried by Trey Burton. Uh -uh. First down and 10. 12 play drive. Here's McElroy. Tipped. Incomplete. Will Hill, number 10. Well, Alabama drove down there and got a field goal. Now you wonder, should have Florida just said, let's kick a field goal, make it a 3-3 game. You know, I, I can understand it. I, can, I really can. They thought they had a play that worked. I don't have any problem with it. I guess it's a little different when the other team, one thing they know about Alabama, they don't do more than spend 20 hours there talking on the phone. They watch tapes for 20 hours. They were ready. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Second down and 10. Ingram, not much this time. Mark Ingram missed the first two with that knee surgery. He said it. It's not 100% yet. He wanted to come back against Penn State at uh, primetime game played here, but uh, in retrospect, said wisely they held him out one more. And uh, nine carries for 151 yards at Duke. And last week up at Arkansas, boy, he was something else. 154 yards. McElroy, nobody open. How about that? There's Ingram said yesterday I'm pretty good at catching the ball too. Well, this was another wonderful play by the quarterback. Yeah. And, and I actually think uh, McElroy might have got popped on that thigh again or ankle or something because he's limping again. It's his right thigh took a, an opponent's helmet to his right thigh last week. And it looked like his ankle he came from behind. Justin Tratto got him from behind that time, and he's, now it's the ankle. Starts with the thigh, goes the ankle. Soon it'll be your hip, believe me. Once you get hit and hurt, and then we, and then we, and, and then we sing them bones and bones <laughs> gonna walk around. McElroy diving attempt as it was. Well, McElroy last week had two interceptions in the second quarter at Arkansas and uh, bounced back but boy he took a pounding in the game didn't yeah, he yeah he got a knee right to his thigh limped off nursed it all week i watched him in practice thursday he seemed fine he told us he was fine but trust me once something goes wrong everything goes wrong when you're playing football just adds up 
Second and ten. Marquise Mays in motion to the left side. Sweet Richardson. Oh, wow. So you get enough of Mark Ingram, and they put in Trent Richardson. What a one-two punch. Well, one of the hidden assets of this Alabama team is Mike Williams, number 89. Watch it. They call him a third tackle, a tackle with ball skills. Look him hook on the end of the line. And, gee, Trent Richardson's really good. But any SEC back there is going to gain 20 yards. I mean, that was just great blocking at the point of attack. And he got a good block from the wide receiver, Marquise Mays. And now first down after that 30-yard gain. Play action. McElroy. Darius Hanks wide open. Left side. See, uh, uh, excuse me, Vern. See, Nick understands this team is different. Last year, he had to baby his offense because he had a new quarterback that he really didn't trust. Now, Greg McElroy's earned his trust. He knows he's got weapons at the skill positions, and he's going to say, we're not going to just play defense this year. We're going to continue to move the ball, throw it, and be balanced. So far in the game, 16 plays, seven runs, nine pass. Should be, well, time is called. By Alabama. No. They give him the timeout or the quarter expired? Okay. So, Alabama is not charged with the timeout. And now, now it is a timeout. The clock operator, a little slow on the trigger finger. He allowed it to go down to zero. They did reset the clock. Two seconds. Final play of the, the first quarter. Oh, wow. Hanks had to go down low, but he got it. As McElroy had all kind of... Well, that's good use of your timeout. Yeah, that's right. Well, they didn't want to get uh, a delay a game at the end of the quarter, so they had to call the timeout. Great route running right there. Now, that is... The end of the first quarter as you look at Darius Hanks. Square out. End of the quarter. Wonderful throw. We'll return to Brian Denny Stadium after this message and a word from your local station. on the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. And they have gone to the north end of the stadium now. First down and 10 at the 14-yard line. Florida, as you can see, 69 total yards. And Alabama, 114. McElroy. Underneath the Darius Hanks. And that's going to move the ball to the six-yard line. Well, Nick Saban said to, to Tracy as we came on the air, balance. Yeah. Well, they've got a quarterback that's balanced right now. He's 8 for 11 in the football right. game. And as good as those backs are, and you know you got them, when you got a quarterback that can keep making plays like this, you can see why Alabama continues to drive. Both defenses had a good stop in their zone, in their goal line defense so far. Florida decided to go for it. Alabama decided to kick a field goal in the first drive. Here's McElroy under center. That's Preston Dial leading the way. Ingram. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. Ingram said of Trent Richardson, we're like brothers. We compete, but we don't compete. 
and help each other improve. Nine plays, 80 yards to 307. Off the clock, Ingram. Chase Warmack got the hook block. Mark Ingram Byrne, he knew he had it the whole way. He baited Florida in and just took it to the outside for an easy touchdown. We invite you to watch fantasy football today to get the last minute news and analysis you need to set up your fantasy league lineup. It's live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern only on CBSSports.com. Mark Ingram, six yard run to put the period to an 80 yard drive, and it all began after Florida had gone 74 yards and had an interception in the end zone on the attempted jump pass. Yeah, I, I think Florida's been served notice. They're going to have to score in this football game. This is Kate Foster, the freshman out of South Lake Carroll. Ironically, Kate Foster from the same high school at which Greg McElroy starred and led the team to a state championship his senior year. Foster number 43. Robert Clark and Mike Gillisley are the two deep men. In and out of the end zone. Let's go back and take a look at Mark Ingram's touchdown run. Fern, watch the wonderful combination of patience and power. How is this guy right here going to block this guy right here? And then how is Warmack, the guard, going to come around and make his block? Patience, watch Preston dial. Wait and get the block. Power. Come around the side, Chance Warmack, and then patience and power by your running back. Bad news for this Florida defense. Remember early in the drive, Trent Richardson got outside for a big sweep, and now Mark Ingram gets outside for a big touchdown. It was those two running backs who really dominated the game last year, the SEC championship. Trey Burton is back in the lineup, and here is Brantley going left and finding a brick wall. Let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Vern out west. Stephon Taylor, a 44-yard touchdown run. They are gashing the Cardinal Big Ten, gashing their Pac-10 brethren. Already Andrew Luck, a touchdown pass and a touchdown rush. It's 21 to three. Back to you. All right, Stanford trying to go to five and zero for the first. How about that? Since 1951. Second down. Dive play left. Emmanuel Moody, number 21, who another Texan, began his career collegiately at Southern California. Urban Meyer's team now down 10. Largest deficit they have faced this year. Well, they've got a problem. They do not have the breakaway threat of Jeffrey Demps, and it looks like they're going to have to open it up and throw the ball. And on this play, Burton, top of the screen, number eight. Oh, I beg your pardon. He's uh, to the left side in the backfield. Carl Moore, number nine, is wide left. Let's see if Alabama can get a pass rush here. They have only four sacks this year. That's one way to try it. Now, against whom? It's going to be third and short, but now Dead what do ball. you do? Offside defense, five yard penalty. Main third down. Ever since the first game against Tennessee, when Florida went third and short and didn't make it, and fourth and short and didn't make it, they've gone to a different attack in third and short. Here they go again. Yep. Snap back. Brantley rolls right. Avoids the uh, pressure, and it's knocked free. It was intended for more. And Robert Lester, number 37 who is this week's defensive player of the week in the Southeastern Conference, was up there to help. 
Watch Dante Hightower take away the first option on this play and allow Lester to make the play. Hightower out, taking away the first throw, forces Brantley to come back, puts it right there, should have been caught. That brings on Chaz Henry to punt. Henry will also do the field goal work tonight as Caleb Sturgis, the regular, is back home with a stress fracture in his lower back. Sturgis might be out for as many as six to eight weeks. Nice high punt. Julio Jones gathers it in at the 18, and he's got some room. Knocked out of bounds as he gets to the 42-yard line by the putter, Chaz Henry. Florida's punt coverage has been superb over the last few years. Last week, they gave up a 21-yarder, and this one exceeds that. You're right. And coming down, Julio Jones, you think he's a big guy, but he catches it, and then Henry's the last guy to get it. Also, Will Hill could have been there to make it, but didn't make the tackle. A couple of weeks ago, Gary Danielson said, these guys are so good, they need a nickname. <laughs> so, several have been suggested. Thunder, Lightning, Shock and Awe, Meat and Potatoes, Porterhouse, Alpha and Omega. We, we even challenged the radio listeners to the local talk shows. They called in ideas. So, in the car yesterday, going to our meetings, Tracy Wolfson said, I've got an idea. How about Fast and Furious? And they've showed it so far in this game, and you know they're interchangeable. They're fast, and they run furious. There's no doubt about that. Almost a sure thing. Is that what we started with? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, fast on the left and furious on the right, or vice versa. <laughs> Either fits. Hope you like it. If you don't, call Tracy. First down and 10. Richardson's in the backfield. McElroy. Deacon Lemons was there defensively. In that situation, Greg did a good job of seeing that nothing was there. Now the next thing he has to do is slide and save himself. He's too important to the football team to be doing this. That's taken on a 255-pound defensive end outside linebacker, and that's just silly. No gain, second and 10. Marquise Mays and Darius Hanks come out. Michael Williams goes tight to the right. And Brad Smelly, number 17, is to the left side. It's Richardson out of the Wildcat. That's Preston Dial going right. Richardson, delay. Get out of my way. Well, these two, there's a scramble for the football. And uh, oh, they did not is it this no battle. whistle. Julio Jones finally picked it up. Well, that was interesting. Well, they had close to 700 touches without a fumble, maybe more. And was he down? Was his forward progress stopped? If there was no whistle, looks like there was a whistle on the play. Now, let's see if we get any indication from Thomas Ritter. We do not. It was ripped out. It will go as a fumble. He was on another no. player. That's... So, Ahmad Black... Pulled it out for Florida, third and five. Timeout. Yeah, I, I wonder if Urban is going to want to challenge this with the timeout or at least give the replay official more time. Or was it Alabama? Alabama. Oh, my. Time. CBS Sports coverage will continue after this word from your local station. Now, these guys do not fumble very often. This one, Gary, uh, Trent Richardson's carry, ruled a fumble on the field. Yeah, we watched this three or four times. I thought he was down there. Obviously, the whistle didn't blow. It's ripped out. It went to Julio Jones, and it was a live ball, and he actually gained a couple extra yards on the play from where uh, Richardson was down. Well, they recovered the fumble. Take a look at that. 726 touches running and receiving. And between the two of them, two lost fumbles. Now, does Florida come with some pressure? Because this is this area where Nick likes to go for it on fourth down if it's close. Not with uh, lots of time. Did it again, didn't he? Yeah. Brandon Antoine.
line, number 47. Look at McElroy with a big smile. Yep. So underrated, his ability to just sense what's going on the field and get out of nothing plays just by managing the pocket, moving around, and then not panicking, getting up the field and making a first down. We saw it in the SEC Championship, and Mike Williams got oh. a big block, didn't he? Oh. Right at the end. First down and 10. Mike Williams, number 89. And that was a gain of 11. Here's Richardson. Follows Preston Dial, goes right. Squeezes through a very slight opening. Well, Greg McElroy uh, was so integral a part of that championship game win last year. Well, yeah, everybody thought these were the plays that Tebow was going to make in the game, and it ended up being McElroy, the manager of the game, that made the key plays. Played behind Chase Daniel for two years at South Lake Carroll. One thing I'm sure of, we won't see those white helmets again for a <laughs> long, long time for Florida. Daniel went on to Missouri, and McElroy led his team to a state title 16 and 0. Oh, oh, man. That would be Richardson, and he is. Now that's furious. That's scary furious. He runs right through a tackler. Right into the blitz. Right over a defender. Was it Will Hill? I think it was Will Hill. An All-American type, yes. Will Hill right through him. My goodness. Now they list him 5'11", 220. And now they put the backup in, the Heisman. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Here's Ingram. To the three-yard line. It's so funny just watching this. So many teams with that spread offense, guys all over the field and going in motion. And this is like watching 1960 football right here. They throw the ball, they run a single ring, and they hand the ball to this guy. Now the term inexorable comes to mind. They just keep coming at you. Hand off Ingram. In the corner. Now, did the ball get across? No. Ruled out of bounds just short. Get to the edge. Run at the big guys. Preston Dial's always in the middle of it, isn't he? Yes. <laughs> Now, who's going to get it? Third down. Ingram in the backfield. That's dial number 85. Lead block by the fullback. Touchdown, Alabama. Two for Ingram tonight. And it's 16 zip. Fast and furious. Jeremy Shelley is on to try the extra point. A.J. McCarron is the holder. He's also Greg McElroy's backup. Great punt return by Julio Jones of 40 yards. Set up this 42-yard drive. Yeah, all the stars were in this one. Julio from the start. How about that offensive line? Pushing, 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 and driving right in the end zone. And the score has been fast and furious. 17-0. That's second deck to the left. 9,000 seats added in 98. And to the right, 9,000 seats added this offseason. And the coverage from up on high provided by Goodyear. And with the additional 18,000 seats in the last 11 years, 101,821 seats available. I, I don't want to say you're close to the field here, but it feels like if you spill your drink, it's going to land on the field. <laughs> are you suggesting that we are not quite as uh, no, high I mean, in the air? As, no, when you're in those end yeah. zone seats, I mean, you're, you know, you're close. Those are great seats. Yeah. This has become, I think, Gary, one of the, one oh, of the yeah. most beautiful football stadiums in the country. 
And a lot of credit goes to Mal Moore, the athletic director, who uh, told us last night. That was his charge when he came in as the AD in 1999. Improved the facilities. Gillisley. In between the 25 and 30 yard lines. Trey Burton, true freshman, Venice, Florida. For more, let's get down to Tracy Wolfson. Well, Vern, let's go outside the huddle. Trey Burton's given name, Lawrence Godfrey Burton III, named after his paternal grandfather, Larry Burton, a tremendous athlete himself, an Olympic track athlete who played football at Purdue and was a first-round draft choice for New Orleans. His brother, Clay, is an offensive linebacker is a linebacker and he verbally committed to play at Notre Dame besides spending time with his brother and playing football what does Trey like to do play Xbox and eat chocolate guys all right Trace three wide receivers left here's the pass incomplete at the 40 yard line Jordan Reed the intended uh, receiver the tight end number 11 you know, Vern, it's amazing what a little rest does. I was out at practice Thursday, and Marcel Darius, I thought it was 75, 80%, and I wondered if he could get the push and be effective enough. Remember at the end of the game last week against Arkansas, he was barely moving, but he's been a threat in this football game. He is much better. And again, Jeff Demps uh, bothered by the bad ankle, gave it a go, but he's on the bench, and here's Brantley. Courtney Upshaw, number 41. Let's take a look at Marcel Darius and what he does here, eating up two guys and allows Upshaw to eat up the run carrier. This is what you have to do. Make two guys block you. He's got Pouncey and Hurt. And from the backside comes Upshaw. Beautiful defense. Trey Burton behind his right tackle, number eight. Here's Brantley, stunts defensively. Brantley, oh, it's picked off. Dre Kirkpatrick had one of the big interceptions against Arkansas last week. And Brantley, whose streak of 156 without an interception was ended last week, is picked off for the second week in a row. Watch what a good zone defender will do if he has nobody in his area. He'll shove his receiver, and then he'll look for the next most dangerous guy. He finds him, and he takes him. Beautiful defensive work by a zone corner who had nothing outside of him. Kirkpatrick, as you saw, his third pick of the year, and Brantley puts on the headsets, and they'll try and sort something out. First down and 10, here's McElroy. Hangs on to it. Uh, Greg's got a lot in his mind, not only Florida football tonight, he's uh, attempting to get a Rhodes Scholarship, and his presentation for the Rhodes Scholarship is due tomorrow night. He said he's gone through eight or nine drafts. It's a 1,000-word essay, and he told us yesterday he'd almost rather it be 20 pages, like the old Blue Book test. Yes. But this one, 1,000 words, and he'll get word on the scholarship on November 20th. Marquise Mays is in the backfield. He's going to throw. Man wide open. Touchdown, Michael Williams. Mays to Williams. And the lead is increased. What they tell us last week, they can run the Wildcat out of 11 different formations. Well, remember, Marquise Mays uh, is a high school quarterback. So you knew something was up when they went with him in the Wildcat. Shelley is on for the extra point. equal to run look at the safety it's going to happen right there the tight end the tackle with ball skills everybody thinks it's going to be another run as easy as you could get one pitch and catch right on the money he looked pretty good throwing that football well can't get anybody more open than that that's for sure <laughs> well that's an advantage yeah. I admit. <laughs> Mays to Williams TD Alabama 
24 nothing Alabama leads forward and Urban Myers brilliant career he's going to be a part of the Aflac trivia question tonight and here it is which is the only team to defeat an Urban Meyer coach team twice in a row it's only happened once and recall that Alabama gave Florida and Urban Meyer a beating in the SEC title game last year down 24 nothing Crimson Tide have had four possessions four scores Kate Foster, Robert Clark, and Mike Gillisley are the deep men. Here's Foster's kickoff. Taken near the goal line by Gillisley. Tripped up. And down it almost went. There are flags down. How about that? Trent Richardson on the tackle. Yeah, on the kickoff team. Hmm. So the flag. Well, this is Urban Meyer and Florida's first visit here in five years. And all of us who were here remember this play from a different number four. That was Tyrone Prothro. 31 to 3, fourth and five. And Mike Shula had Brody Croyle throw it deep. That was the last play of Tyrone Prothro's collegiate career. He's here at the game tonight in one of the suites. He's working as a bank teller in a bank not too far from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Marvelous young player in that game. He had seven catches for 134 yards. Here's Brantley, right side, Trey Burton, out to the 26. And let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Guys, Mike Gillisley came off the field walking gingerly on that right ankle. That's what they're taking a look at, at, at it. They can't afford to lose him with Demp slowed as well. Any more information, I'll bring it to you. All right, Tracy. Sophomore out of DeLand, Florida. 5'11", 191 pounder. Don't know if I've seen a team play a second half as good as Alabama and a first half as good as Alabama back to back. Yeah. Moody, nothing, nothing except Courtney Upshaw, who has a sack tonight and now a tackle for loss. As Florida discusses their injuries and Knicks, Alabama's getting healthy. Courtney Upshaw was nicked all year and he's getting better. Marcel Darius looks better tonight than he did in the second half of that football game. As Alabama gets healthy, you see they have more defensive linemen than they showed in the first four or five games. See number eight, Burton to the left. Out in the uh, pass route. Pass is deep. Tick. Omarius Hines. That's the true freshman. No, I'm sorry. It was Dequan Menzi, number 24, not number 28. See, that's what Alabama does. They challenge right. every throw, especially on third down. Dequan Menzi is just running along and lays out and makes the play right across the arm, and Nick goes just like I taught you. Now here's Chaz Henry on to punt. Remember, he uh, had one return 40 yards by Julio Jones, and it was Henry who saved it. Julio almost uh, broke it for the touchdown. This one a great punt, and he goes, oh, this is statistical. Oh, look at this. Lynch to arrest at the two-yard line. That's just your basic 75-yard punt. Monday on CBS, see why critics are calling the new hit drama Hawaii 5 your next TV obsession. A new episode Monday, only on CBS. 75-yard punt down at the two. Well, at this pace, Alabama's going to put a 5-0 up in this game. <laughs> Boy, I know They're, they really don't have a weakness not on offense. They don't their offensive line their skill receivers their quarterback makes good decisions and they're two great running backs Richardson gets the handoff plunges out across the five to the six Justin Trato number 94 made the stop uh, Ingram Richardson best running back tandem in collegiate football right now. Oh sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, they, they deserve that honor. 
I mean, Richardson is one of a kind, but he's got a guy in front of him that won the Heisman Trophy. What can you say? His second choice, by the way, was Florida, where he was going to go to school. That's right. Well, he went to high school at Escambia, Florida. That's the hometown and same high school of a guy named Emmett Smith. Play fake, McElroy. Uh, incomplete. Got to catch that. Yeah, Julio Jones should have had it. Well, let's just go back this decade and take a look at some of the great running back tandems. Clinton Portis, Frank Gore at Miami. Pretty decent. Marion Barber the third, Lawrence Maroney at Minnesota. Ronnie Brown and Cadillac Williams. Both very yeah. effective. How about Reggie Bush and Lindale White? Felix Jones, Darren McFadden. Two number one picks. Yep. This is a big stop for Florida. They get the ball in the second half. This is their chance. Get a stop here, score, and get it in the second half. Third and six, and they got the stop. Now they have all three timeouts left, 335 to go. And that was Jelani Jenkins in the middle. This is basically, I believe, the ball game for Florida. They need to put points on the board and then start the second half with points. Alabama to punt for the first time tonight. It's Cody Mandel, Lafayette, Louisiana. And Janoris Jenkins, number one, is... Uh, oh, bad, wow, what a bad punt. punt. Yeah, it started with a bad snap, and it got worse. I was watching Jenkins at the left end, and he was waving everybody away from it. Well, the ball bounced 40 yards from him. On the, on the right, that would be Nick Saban. Watch the snap. Low. And then a shank. Carson Tinker, number 51, is the long snapper. And after a 26-yard punt, John Brantley at the Gators trying to get on the board before halftime. Emmanuel Moody, Marcel Darius. Nothing again. That's pretty interesting. That's kind of the team that beat him twice, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> well, it's, it's... Oh, that's great. You're giving away the athlete. <laughs> <laughs> 240 to go. Florida, three timeouts. Brantley. Mike Pouncing will snap it back. Little crossing route underneath, and the umpire got it. Wow. Ha. Well, how about the Aflac answer? Let the Duck come across, who's the only team to defeat Urban Meyer twice in a row. Folks in this state should remember. Auburn, Tommy Tuberville, 06 and 07, third and 11. Stunts, Brantley tipped, incomplete. It'll be fourth down, flag on the far side. Back-to-back -back plays, knocked down by that pass rush from Alabama. When you try to, try to throw those short routes, the defensive linemen can make and affect the game with their hands. Substitution infraction on the offense, number seven. The player did not get inside the numbers prior to the snap. A penalty's declined, fourth down. Again, Florida's been throwing short throughout this game. So the Florida defensive linemen have been jumping and making plays. And it was Courtney Upshaw again. I think he made both of them. Upshaw, both two for two. It was Justin Williams, a wide receiver, with the infraction. The umpire. <laughs> They've been getting enough pressure not to have to blitz. Four-man rush has been enough. Brantley. Is it complete? It is. Oh, wow. Carl Moore made the catch. And I think with that spot, they're going to convert the fourth down. And he's been their third down go-to guy all year. 
Good pass protection, a great throw, almost knocked down, and look at that catch. Great concentration by Moore because Drake Kirkpatrick was all over Moore on that play. Each of his last seven receptions had resulted in a third down conversion. Now the fourth down reception gives Florida a breath of life. Almost a bad snap again. Here's Moody. I think it's Demps. Uh, it? it is Demps, right? Yes. Two instead of 21. Bad snap again to the left. Brantley did a good job. And that was a big tackle by Hightower. I think Demps would have been in the end zone. Second and two officially. Alabama comes with their dime package. Will Lowry in the game. Three down for the Crimson Tide. They're going to bring low and the right tackle move. Influence. That was Xavier Nixon who moved. Uh, false start. 73. Offense. Five yard penalty. Xavier Nixon has played as a true freshman right there. He sees the blitz coming from the outside. Menzi is going to come, and he's going to react to it, but too quick. Maurice Hurt was trying to pull him back. <laughs> Second down. Florida timeout time called out. by the sideline, yeah. yeah. Yep. Urban Meyer called this one. That is uh, Florida's first with 55 seconds to go before the break. 24-0 Alabama. Florida trying to get on the board. Back in Tuscaloosa, Brian Denny Stadium with Alabama leading by 24. And coming up less than a minute of game time, we'll go back to New York for the Geico Halftime Report. Tim Spencer and Tony Barnhart get you up to date on uh, this significant weekend in college football. Second down and seven. They're hurting Nixon on the right side for Florida. Brantley in the end zone. Man open. Tough, tough play. It was intended for Carl Moore. Deep in the left corner of the end zone. Mark Barron was covering. How about that strong safety? Mark Barron is the guy that had to make the play on that one. It was a good matchup for Florida. And right at the end, he grabbed his arm just as the ball got there. Remember, Florida does not have their regular field goal kicker, and they're down 24 points. Right. Whoa. Incomplete. Ruled a forward pass. Incomplete. Moody couldn't hang on to the fourth down. Very interesting decision here by Urban Meyer. They've already made a fourth down conversion. You're down 24 points. Do you kick a field goal and give your team something before half? Now, Chaz Henry's going to attempt a field goal. He did kick field goals in high school. His longest was 57. It's a brand new holder, John Crowfoot, number 47. See if from 39 yards out good snap good hold and Henry nails it and Caleb Sturgis I'm sure back home in Gainesville applauding as his teammate gets on the board but they still trail by 21. in Tuscaloosa. It's been a one-sided battle so far. And moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Nick Saban. Coach, so much went right for you in that first half, but what stood out the most? Well, I think the way we, you know, controlled the ball on offense, 
Kept a lot of balance, kept the ball, kept possession of the ball. I think it's going to be important in the second half as well. Defensively, how have you been able to hold them to just three points? Well, you know, the goal line stand really helped. Uh, we've had good field position, and we've been able to keep the ball. We played pretty well on third down. We're getting a little pressure on the quarterback, not getting sacks. we got to continue to do that. A big lead, but what do you remind your team coming out here? Well, if they learned anything last week, it should be about a 60-minute game, and we, we got to stay focused and motivated and be aggressive in what we're doing. Thanks a lot. All right. Baron, back to you. All right, Tracy, thank you. Recall that uh, Jeffrey Demps is hampered with an ankle. Andre DeBose is uh, back to return the kick, number four. Kate Foster will kick it off. And here is DeBose who caught his first four passes of his Florida career. And wow, he muffs it. But he's got great speed. How about that for making something out of nothing? Out across the 27-yard uh, line. So Florida does get the ball. Now, I want you to know, I've thought long and hard to during the end. Yeah, <laughs> for a really innovative, penetrating question here. What are you going to do with your Florida? And, and you know, Vern, I spent the whole half trying to think of something that I would do if I was Urban. I would tell my team to think about, remember the national championship game with Texas? They had a freshman quarterback. Everything looked bad. They just started chucking it, and they got back in the game. I think that's what Florida has to do. Chuck it early and see if they can get back in the game throwing the ball. Bradley will do it on first down, and he hits his receiver out of the backfield, and that's Trey Burton. Number eight. Well, Florida in the first half. The possession chart, nothing to uh, call home about. Well, he started out, Brantley did three for three. And then he finished up, what, two for ten in that first half? Uh, I think they just got to keep chucking. I really do. It's like Gilbert did against them in the national championship game. Throw more early and then come back to your other plays. Here's the dive play. Demps cut down as he gets uh, to the 49-yard line. I think the most disappointing thing for the Florida team, yes, they're not stopping their run game. I understand that for Alabama. But that offensive line for Florida, such veterans are not producing any blocks. I don't know if they've blocked Marcel Darius yet in the football game. It is a veteran uh, offensive line. And, 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 you know, every time you talk to Steve Adazio, he says, we're not a finesse team. We blow people out. We're physical. Well, I think he needs to challenge him and say, come on, guys, let's do it. That's Xavier Nixon, number 73, sets up at right tackle. Brantley. Nixon gets the block to give him time. Andre DeBose. We mentioned that he made his first four catches of his career last week in the win over Kentucky. That's his first night and it's good for a gain of 26. See, here's what, again, I, I, I've been saying this when I did the Tennessee game, and I've been saying it when I've been interviewed for four weeks. You got a throwing quarterback. You got to throw. I mean, as much as you'd like to run that offense that you've had, if you don't have a quarterback that can run, it's hard to run that spread. Trey Burton is your backhand. He's not your forehand. Your quarterback has to be your forehand. Here's Brantley. Demps is alongside number two. They head to Demps and he runs into traffic again. How about Gary? Uh, look at the halftime trends. They got to be good ones for Alabama, mm -hmm. don't they? Two touchdowns for Ingram. Well, there you go. McElroy right there is in charge of the football game. Hasn't had the turnovers like he did against Arkansas. The changeup guy has not been able to change up at all. When you turn it over on the road, you're going to lose, no matter how good your recruits are. Burton to the left, in motion now. Play fake. Tried to set the screen, but uh, oh my goodness. Nice job getting it away, though. And uh, let's get a, an update on Mike Gillisley. Here's Trace. Well, guys, he came out on crutches during halftime. He is out with a badly sprained right ankle. The good news is I was told that Demps is hanging in just fine. He needed no attention at half. And he will obviously have to try even harder to play through that sprained fight with Gillisley out, guys. Third and seven. Florida only one of seven on third down conversions. Shaky snap again. Here's Brantley. Got a man. Yep, beautiful. Carl Moore with a first and goal. See, I think 
when you're having trouble doing something, you got to do what the quarterback does best. And Moore comes inside very nicely and then comes back outside, plants that foot, and a wonderful throw right over the defender that time. Milliner, that's a wonderful throw to the outside by Brantley. Kirby Smart, defensive coordinator, Alabama. Now let's see if they'll let Brantley be the quarterback the whole time they're inside the 10. Last time he didn't get to do it. Burton, wide right. Moody alongside John Brantley. There's the dive again, and Moody is stuffed. Well, I'll tell you, he's having a good football game. Courtney Upshaw is number 41. He knocked down a couple passes, and that time he just stunted it and made the tackle right as the Brantley was handing the ball off on the dive play. Now take a look at the uh, Verizon red zone. And Florida has a second down and goal. Burton will take the direct snap. Bobbled it straight up the middle. Is that Marcel Darius again? Good chance. <laughs> wow. Yes, it is. Another bad snap. My, that just throws off the timing. Burton gets in, and that was Hightower. Hightower, that time. yeah, it yeah, was. Hightower got that one. Darius thought if he came in late, we'd talk about yes. it. Yes. That was Dante Hightower. It's Darius Hightower and Courtney Upshaw, along with Mark Barron, who are the. Uh, the foundation points of this defense. That's a freshman, C.J. Mosley, number 32. Here's Brantley. Whips it. Incomplete. Intended for Thompson. You know, it strikes me that last year, Tebow would go to Hernandez in this situation. You know, there is no Hernandez. There are no Cornelius Ingram. They have young players, Trey Burton, Jordan Reed, look at the great coverage in the secondary that time. I think it was Milliner again, wasn't it? It was. One throw went over his outstretched hand, and that one he made. Well, Urban Meyer decides to uh, take the field goal attempt. I think he knows his team is fragile, and he needs to have a successful drive and put points on the board. Chaz Henry, second field goal tonight. He hit his first from 39. This one from 21. He's on in place of Caleb Sturgis. And they do get three out of the opening drive of the third quarter. The margin has been cut to 18. Alabama and Nick Saban when we come back. Uh, 101,000 and a few extra hands at uh, Brian Denny Stadium and Tuscaloosa aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Well, as successful as that drive was for Florida, as you're looking at the stats right there, it also was successful for the Alabama defense. Or remember that drive right before the end of the half? They had the ball, Florida did it at the 36-yard line. They only gave up three, and then as successful as that drive was, they ended up stopping them for no touchdown again. That's good defense. They're playing against skilled players, and they hold them to a field goal. Here's Brad Phillips with the uh, kickoff. He's kicking in place of Caleb Sturgis tonight. Trent Richardson told you he broke one for 91 earlier. Richardson at Escambia High School in Florida had three kickoff returns for touchdowns then. Well, we talked about Greg McElroy and that undefeated record in high school and college. How about John Brantley? He's now started five games here. He's 31 and one as a starting quarterback. He lost only once in the state finals his senior year to Pahokee High School. The class 2B, McElroy, 16-0 as a high school senior, and of course 14-0 last year as the quarterback of the national champions. Pretty good numbers. I'd say. Here's McElroy. Hmm. Jonathan Bostic, number 52, got there, but now we've gotten to know Greg over the last couple of years. We asked him yesterday, did he remember? the last time he was defeated it was in 2001 and it was against a middle school from grapevine texas they were tied 6-6 in the fourth quarter and his center snapped the ball over his head through the end zone safety they lost 8-6 <laughs> hate when that happens huh yeah. 
First down and ten. Left side, Julio Jones. He's got Carpenter out in front. And that was very, uh, no flag. You know, that really did seem inadvertent. Jelani Jenkins, number 43 over there. So they moved the ball out. Well, Greg McElroy was telling us that uh, his dad missed that loss. And that was the last game he's ever missed. That's Greg McElroy Sr. And his mom, Jamie, sister to the right. Greg McElroy Sr. is an executive with the Dallas Cowboys. He'd also worked with the Rangers and out west with both the Dodgers and the Los Angeles Kings. Second down. Ingram. There's that little slip screen, well defended by Florida. Now, Erdman talked about to Tracy whether his players had learned a lesson from what happened last week. Excuse me, Nick talked to Tracy at halftime about whether his players learned a lesson about what happened last week against Arkansas. I wonder if the Alabama staff has learned a lesson because Arkansas kind of took their foot off the accelerator. Let's see if Alabama can continue to be aggressive with their play calling here in the second half. McElroy is 10 of 14 in this game. Third and four. He's forced out to his right. Goes deep and incomplete. Darius Hanks. He, he did everything right except just didn't hit it the target that time. Mm -hmm. Will Hill was defending Darius Hanks. 10 on 15. And so uh, a rare occasion when Alabama is going to have to punt. And uh, remember the last one. Yeah. Shanked it. 26 yards. Janoris Jenkins is back to return the punt of Corey Mandel. Can Florida special teams do anything to get things going for him? Not Mandel. yet. Not yet. Oh, my. Oh, did he go into the end zone or is it down? It is down at the one. Now remember the difference in professional football. If your foot is touching the end zone line, it's a touchback. In college football, it's the ball. So even though Kirkpatrick is in the end zone, the ball isn't. Well, it's 24-6 uh, here. How about elsewhere around the country? Nevada ranked for the first time since I was a boy. Uh, George Blanda, the former All-American at Kentucky and longtime NFL player passed away. He, of course, played for Bear Bryant at Kentucky. Our best wishes go out to Mark D'Antonio, who was unable to go to the game today. Watch from the hospital after a heart attack a week ago. A.J. Green back in after a four-game suspension for Georgia. Two touchdowns tonight. And heart attack's a little less painful when you're 5-0. and oh, Yeah. Like Michigan State. That's right. First down from the two. That'll be second down from the four. Trey Burton, number eight. Well, you wonder if Steve Adazio, the offensive coordinator for Florida, can challenge his offensive line and say, come on, guys. You're the heaviest, and we say the strongest offensive line in the SEC. Could you get us a first down? He was talking yesterday or earlier this week, I beg your pardon, on the phone, about Trey Burton. And he's a rough Connecticut kind of guy, and he said, he is a football playing guy. There he is. Excuse me. There he is right there. Play action and wide open is Deontay Thompson. Out of the backfield and all the way out to the 28, 29 yard line. They had a corner blitz from the side for, for there and that's what allowed. Watch it. Coming right off the corner. Good read by Brantley throwing the ball exactly where he needed to throw. He made the fake and read the hot at the same time, and that allowed the play with the perfect call into that corner cat. 24-yard gain, Thompson from Brantley. Brantley has uh, been on target for most of this second half. Yeah, well, they're letting him be on target. Yeah. Demps. Oh, those snaps back are a little wobbly I still. Know. They really are. 
Well, Mike Pouncey played, what, two years at guard. He also played defensive tackle for Florida. I mean, he really is a great football player, but he's still new at center. This is their five best guys. They want him in the game, and listen, that's all Florida does is shotgun, so he's going to have to learn it. Well, his twin brother Marquise was the center last year. Now probably in Pittsburgh, I'm guessing, watching this game and saying, come on, Mike, put it a little more to your right. That one's good. Brantley back. Nobody open. Oh. Intercepted. And here we go. Touchdown, Alabama. C.J. Mosley, the freshman linebacker. Extra point coming. Sometimes you can't win for trying. Trying to dump the ball safely to Emmanuel Moody right here. He thinks Moody is going to drift in, but he doesn't. The last second, Moody stops, and Mosley just comes in and reads Brantley's eyes. He thinks it's going to drop it. Right to the other guy, a gift. Steve Adazio, the offensive coordinator, thought, well, maybe. Not to be. Third interception for Alabama tonight. Well, sometimes words just disappear. <laughs> This is a great segue. Monday on CBS, somebody's looking for trouble on TV's number one comedy. An all-new Two and a Half Men. Monday. Only CBS. C.J. Mosley. I remember talking with Kirby Smart a couple of weeks ago on the phone. He said this freshman linebacker is a pretty good player. Yeah, he's played a lot tonight. Mostly has. Andre DeBose, number four. He's going to be down near the 22-yard line. Interceptions, three of them. Yeah, it has. It's uh, led to 14 points, and of course, he raced a possible seven points. The first one by Johnson right there on the ill-timed jump pass, and then a, a drop-off pass. Both of Brantley's interceptions have been on drop-off passes underneath his checkdowns, which are supposed to be the safest thing your quarterback does. And obviously it has, and it's a real dilemma now for Florida. They're not comfortable running the offense that their quarterback does the best. John Brantley had a streak. You saw two interceptions in 18 games before tonight. He had a streak of 156 without him. INT that ended last week. Here's Jeffrey Demps going right, losing a yard. Now let's go back to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Vern, it's safe to say quarterback play is not an issue uh, for Kellen Moore. Three touchdown passes, 13 of 18, close the books on him. 196 yards, they're leading 52 to nothing against New Mexico State. Denard Robinson of Michigan, almost 500 total yards, five touchdowns, and DeMarco Murray helps lead the Sooners in the Red River rivalry to victory over Texas. Back to you. All right, thank you, Tim. Brantley in trouble, out to the 25. Darrington Centimore, number 94, made that tackle. Yeah, Centimore almost got him once and then ended up getting him again, but Marcel Darius inside. The more you watch this guy, he lines up sometimes a nose tackle. Boy, that's good against good. He's going up against Pouncey. It's one of the best offensive linemen in the country, and Darius gets underneath and leverages him right back into the quarterback. Third and seven. <clears throat>
stunts defensively. Brantley over the middle, caught for the first down. Out to the 38-yard line. That's Frankie Hammond Jr., number 85. And so Florida does convert. It's, a, it, it's really an interesting dilemma for Florida. I mean, it's not yet in the season where they match up well enough to handle Alabama. They're a young football team. But where do they go from here the rest of the year? Do they try to get better being a drop back passing team, which their quarterback does well? Or do they bring in Burton and other quarterbacks and try to go back to what they used to do last year? Interesting decisions for Florida. First down and 10. Brantley rolling right after the play fake. Drills it. And it's complete. Inside the 45 yard line, that catch made by Jordan Reed, number 11. Because you can see the skills that John Brantley has throwing the ball. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, we all know he's a gifted thrower, inexperienced. And remember, the Florida offense is inexperienced. And now they're going against a well-coached Alabama team. Just faced one of the best passers in college football a week ago. So they're not intimidated at all. First down and 10, Gators. This time they'll operate with Brantley under center. Play fake. Good block in the backfield. Intercepted. Nope, 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 nope. Mark Barron came down out of bounds, and now he's going to get flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct. He uh, heaved the ball down. It bounced away from the official, and uh, that's going to cost him. Well, we talked about three returning players for this team, Darius, Hightower, and Barron, and they might be as good as they are as number four at their positions in college football. He makes the catch out of bounds. He thinks he has an interception. He sees it. It's called no. After the play was over. Slams it. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number four, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Can't do that. Official's right in front of you. Yeah. Three feet away from you. Official was right there. Yep. So was the football. That didn't take long to get that, that was easy. flag but out, just, did it? Just to find the flag, yeah. that's all it took. <laughs> First down and 10, Gators. 31 to 6, Demps. Brantley, oh, brother, that's a lateral. Because it was touched, and Demps has to go back and, and fall on. Had a decent play into the corner cat here, but Brantley didn't get it out fast enough and pitch it. He's not as good as Tebow. Watch, a corner cat into the sideline for the eight-man front, and he tips the ball, trying to get it to Demps. Pitch it, pitch it. Took too long. He had the play if he got rid of it. In that case, when you see the quarter cat, burn, forget the fade. Just wave and pitch. He would have had the play. Lost eight instead. It's second and 18. Ooh, he's got a lot of time. And when he's given that time, finds the open man. In this case, it's Deontay Thompson. So they got 15 of the 18 back. Well, you look down here. DeBose, Thompson, Moore, Dunbar, Hammond, all highly recruited wide receivers. They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Because they don't have Demps healthy, they got to find different ways to get the ball into the hands of their other playmakers on the field. Third down and three. Three wides to the right. Demps alongside Brantley. Got him. Demps nailed. Fourth down. Damian Square, number 92. Well, I think they were just stunning up front. Damian Square was lined up. Over the nose, Pouncey just whiffs. Pouncey is really struggling at center here. He got leveraged into the quarterback, and that time Square went right around the All-American center to make that play. Fourth and four. Four-man rush. Brantley hit as he lets it go. A flag between the 10 and 15-yard line. Carl Moore, the intended receiver. Looks like it might have been Chris Jordan. Yeah, I think there was, might have been holding downfield, though. And I think 28, DeMarcus Milliner, is going to get holding on the play. Prior to the pass being thrown, holding number 28 defense, 10-yard penalty, first down. A little bit of panic that time. 
Watch this. Comes inside and he grabs his jersey. Pretty easy to see. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Even from up here. Well, on the coach's clinic tape. That'll be one. Let's define holding. You know what? I'm surprised he panicked so much. That was Trey Burton. That's not a skilled receiver right there. Play fake. Courtney Upshaw rushing. Carl Moore in the end zone. Incomplete. Another flag. This drive has been kept alive by interference. Back to back this time. Well thrown ball. Right to the corner. Milliner does hit his arm before the ball gets there. Pretty so easy call. When they add to the holding call, and well, they say, here's pass interference. Yes. And then remember, they had Mark Barron, the 15 right. yards, too. Number 28, defense. Ball will be put at the two-yard line. First down. You know, that was actually a smart play by Milliner that time. He, he had to save a touchdown. That was a touchdown. He, it's not smart to get beat early, but at the end of the play, he had to interfere. That would have been six and seven points. Demarcus Milliner, the freshman out of Millbrook, Alabama. And, and again, this is Florida's only game. They have to throw the ball. That's yep. all they got. The changeup is the run game. Moody, the deep back in the eye. Hit as he nears the goal line. He's going to be down just short. Jarrell Harris, number five, made the tackle. Very close. Second down. Final minute, third quarter. Timeout, Florida. Yeah, they had to. The play clock was, I mean, the 24-second uh, clock was coming down. Play, uh, the call on the field was confirmed. That play reviewed. And uh, so it will be Florida's ball about a foot outside the goal line, if that. Now, they're going to want just a small thing. They're going to want to score at this end of the field because that's the non-student section. Oh, right. Really? If they have to go the other way, there's going to be a I, raucous noise. I, I think they're all raucous here, to tell well, you the truth. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but I, uh, Florida has moved the ball in the second half. It's the turnover that is just, you know, really. Yeah. Two, Moody is the deep back. Two goal line stands so far by this Alabama defense. Can they do it again? fumbled Alabama has it I think Brantley was first there let's see what the official ruling is yes who else Courtney Upshaw he gets his hands on everything this is the third goal line stand by Alabama in this football game this one is inexcusable for Florida. A simple isolation play mishandled. Oh, look at Brantley gets stepped on coming away from center, and that causes the poor handoff. Watch his foot get stepped on. See? He gets kicked, and he never gets the ball back to Moody. Gosh, we've seen that a lot over yes. the years. And remember, Florida does not have a lot of experience taking snaps from under center. Fourth Gator turnover tonight. They came into this game plus eight through the first four games. They're minus four this evening. Here's Richardson. He stopped. Jelani Jenkins, number 43. At home last week, Florida exploded offensively. 48 points, 466 total yards. Burton had the six touchdowns, one turnover. Disastrous results so far tonight. That is the end of three. We'll return to Bryant Denny Stadium right after this word from your local station.
from up above Brian Denny Stadium. Imagine in 1929, 12,000 stands now, or seats rather, 101,000 in the newly expanded stadium. Here's Julio Jones in motion. Richardson is the deep back. This is his 10th carry of the night, and uh, he's not going to go down easily. Well, you had an idea, Gary, at the, uh, there he is, at the, uh, at the uh, beginning of the second half that uh, Ford just had to start chucking right. it. They did, but. Yeah, I bet it's been but, their short yardage. Yeah. I mean, early in the game, third and one, they didn't make it. Now here's second and one, they do it again. This time, two feet collide and cause a turnover. Now, John Brantley has to understand in that situation, when you get clipped, you got to protect the ball and not take a toss. But he's a young football player trying to make things happen, and he made a bad one. Four turnovers for the Gators tonight. Here's uh, McElroy, right side. Julio Jones just gets to the six, and that's about it. John Brantley. His dad, of course, was a quarterback at Florida, late 70s. Here's a footnote. His roommate at the University of Florida was Chris Collinsworth. That's John's dad. Not sure what happened to him, but uh, always thought he was a very bright fellow. <laughs> Corey well, Mandel will talk. Yeah, to uh, doesn't, doesn't Florida need to go after this and try to get one, Boy, steal, steal a touchdown yep. here? Here they come. Well blocked. Catch is made at the 46. Tackle made by John Fulton, number 10, Janoris Jenkins. He's not happy with things. 38 yard punt, nothing on the return. John Brantley and the Gators try to solve a puzzle when we come back. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Take you back to the opening drive of the game. Jeremy Shelley with his field goal at 28 to no, uh, 28 yards. And here's Ingram, the first of his two touchdowns tonight. That made it 10 nothing. Tack on one more. This one over left guard. And it was 17 to nothing. Marquise Mays added to it. The wide receiver with a 19 yard touchdown pass to Michael Williams. Jazz Henry replacing Caleb Sturgis finally put Florida on the scoreboard 24 3. And he then added another field goal 21 yards out to make it uh, an 18 point margin. Alabama's defense has forced three interceptions. One was returned for a touchdown. That was C.J. Mosley, the freshman linebacker. And uh, that brings us up to date and puts uh, Florida on the field on offense at the 45. Brantley, left side, incomplete. That was Milliner defending the pass attempted for Deontay Thompson. You know what's reminding me a little bit right here is this is a critical decision now for Urban Meyer and his team as they go the rest of the season. Not likely to win this game. But remember in 2006 when Chris Leak threw that interception gift to Ramsey Robinson that was dropped and he stuck with Leak and built that team into a championship team. Will he do the same with Brantley here in this rough game and come back and build a championship team the rest of the year? Here's the sweep to the right. This is Jeffrey Demps. Showed a little bit of the speed that we've grown to uh, accept about him. He's hampered by the ankles. We mentioned Dequan Menzi makes the stop. Because you know a lot of people will start to say to Florida, Let's get out of this offense. Let's go to Trey Burton. That's what we do. Let's go to the kid that ran six touchdowns. That is the decision that this guy right there is going to have to make. And do you have a feeling of which way he'll go? I, I think he has to stick with Brantley. I don't think Trey Burton is ready. Neither did I think Tim Tebow was ready in 2006. That's what I mean. That decision was key by Urban. He was patient. Sidearm, bring it back. It was a flag pre-snap. Prior to the snap, the lead game, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. We 
make of this? I know. Nothing so far for no. Alabama in the second half. They've been able to take their foot off the gas pedal, but it's been a downhill for them. They don't have to. Yeah, coasting. Three down for the Crimson Tide. Brantley will take the snap. Oh, there's another, another bad snap. Yep. Here's Brantley picks it up and fires it right side. Intended for DeBose. But uh, this problem with the shotgun snap with Mike Pouncey continues to inflict harm on the Gators offense. See, it's not all Brantley here because Florida is changing drastically. The new center, the new offense, a change in his staff for Florida, new coaches, a different system. It's not like Landry Dro Jones coming in there for Sam Bradford. This is a whole different look for Florida. Demps, draw play, breaks a tackle. Breaks another and moves the ball to the 21. You know, one of the things, Vern, when I was out at practice Thursday that I noticed that if you're going to come to Alabama and be a linebacker and be the guy that calls the plays, and this time it's Dante Hightower, last year Melinda McLean, you have a lot of meetings with Nick Saban. He literally had four individual meetings at practice, four different times Nick goes, Dante, come here. And they had to do one-on-one -on -one talk throughout the whole practice. He got one-on-one -on -one tutoring the whole day on Thursday. First and ten. Demps. No help out on the edge. Play. That's the freshman, Demarcus Milliner. Yep. He was being blocked on the play. Remember, he just had the two penalties. This time he laid out. And just with his right hand, I think, dove inside and got the tackle. What a play. Watch him come in, dive, beat the block by the wide receiver, and make the tackle. Second and 11. 10.35 to go in this one. Here's Brantley again. Hit as he lets it go. Marcel and Darius. It, uh, Marcel Darius. <laughs> Gee, Merry Christmas. And he's, I, I'll tell you, he's not 100%. Right. Watch him come. I think he's on the right side of the screen right here. I don't know if he's at tackle or end this time. He plays that, or he was at tackle. He comes in on as a stunt that time. Tackles go outside, ends come around. Bang. When he's 100%, he can do those pirouettes and score, remember? Yes. <laughs> and he's... Uh, as a nose tackle right now, straight over the center, Pouncey. Brantley. Marcel Darius in the championship game. First of all, knocked Colt McCoy out in the first quarter. Then he had this uh, key play. Interception return for a touchdown off of the shovel pass right before halftime voted the game's most outstanding defensive player fourth and nine that last pass intended for Stephen Ali number 89 now Demps wide to the left stunts again Singleton missed Bradley almost knocked out on his feet sells out and comes up just short Singleton it's a good thing Singleton missed or we would be I seeing another quarterback. Centimore. Was it Centimore? Number 94 came around, and I thought he had a full head of steam, and Brantley's down on the other end of it. Watch number 94 come inside. Oh, great duck, because he was going full speed. And then he takes two hits from Barron at the end. Oh, boy, he got sandwiched. He sure did. And John Brantley is down, hit yep. by Mark Barron and, and C.J. Mosley. Yep. Wow. Time call. John Brantley, the quarterback, who took that uh, double hit as he uh, dived for the first down on the bench right now. Remember, it's fourth down. Mosley gets him right in the rib cage, right under his right shoulder. I mean, he had no choice. It's fourth down. You can't slide on fourth down. He gets a double hit. Barron and Mosley, and, you know, he showed his teammates something there, but, again, stopped. 
Here's the handoff. Right side to Ingram breaks the first contact. He's had a really modest night as Mark Ingram. That's his ninth carry in just over 30 yards for the evening. But uh, again, John Brantley took a double shot as he came up just short of the first down. Well, you would think if you're Florida, I mean, Alabama has rushed in the whole game for 120 yards. They've passed for 103, and you're getting killed. Yeah. And you've been inside their red, ter red territory five times in this game. You have two field goals, but two huge turnovers. One an interception, the other a fumble, both of those inside the two-yard line. Here's McElroy. Duke Lemons misses it. McElroy scoots down the sidelines and out of bounds. And well, he did not go out of bounds. How about that? I think he's smiling because he tried to bait. First, he baits Duke Lemons to get out of the pocket. Okay, then I think he tries to bait Will Hill and think, I'm going to go out of bounds, I'm going to go out of bounds. No, cut back in and try to make a bigger play out of it because he pops up smiling saying, yep, there's my dad, but I tried to get a big one out of the play. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10 from McElroy. Here's Ingram. I'm just thinking about, we've gotten to know him, Gary, and, and he's just a delightful young man. Has a quiet self-confidence in himself, don't you think? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he understands that the, the most praise he seems to receive is he's such a good game manager. Right. And he told us earlier, I just think about Trent Dilfer with the Ravens. And he said Trent Dilfer's Super Bowl ring is no smaller than Ray Lewis. I did say that. You're right. I mean, it's... Um it's hard. He is actually a type A personality. Oh. I mean, you know, and he has to submit himself to be the quarterback for Alabama because this is how Nick wants him to play in this offense. It's very difficult to do. Play fake. Rush coming. McElroy delivers it over the head of Darius Hanks. Now well, let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Vernon, Gary, this play sums up Georgia's season in a lot of ways. Driving for what could be a game-winning field goal. Caleb King looks to be pitching it back for what could be a uh, flea flicker. Fumbles the football. Bulldogs fall to one and four. Have lost four in a row for the first time in 20 years. And the Buffalo fans storm the field. This just in. That's a one and four team you just beat. <laughs> back to you. Uh, Tim, I'm just, I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah, but it's an SEC team. Well, okay. Everybody likes to beat the SEC right now because it, they're cutting the pub, they're winning the games. For them, it was a big win. Any win in Colorado these days has it been is, a big it is. win. A big win against an SEC team is huge. Justin Tretto with the tackle there. Well, Urban Meyer, he knew this year would be a little bit different. You see the record? Auburn, Alabama, two and four, the rest of the SEC, and, you know, he's dominated the East. The West, he has not had as good a record against. He lost, to, he lost to Ole Miss. He's lost, uh, you know, Auburn and Alabama. Guy can't coach. Nope. Here's Mandel with the punt. Janoris Jenkins is back. Takes it on a hop. And then he is... Uh, Nailed inside the 30-yard line, or just outside the 30. 45-yard punt, seven on the return. 6.38 to go. Crimson Tide rolling. We are back in Tuscaloosa. And let's quickly check in with Tracy Wolfson on John Brantley. Well, as you guys were saying, they were checking out his right ribs. They took a long look at him. He was having some trouble breathing, and then they just had to make sure he can throw. He got on the sideline, threw a few passes. He looked over. He said, I'm fine. He's going to go back in and give it a go. Also, on a few drives earlier, he hurt his right thumb. So he's dealing with that as well, guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. John Brantley, 27-1 and as a starter in high school, 4-0, and and this is first year as a starting Gator quarterback. And tonight it's just been a case of, not, a, not just a case, but the Gators have really self-destructed with turnovers. Alabama's had a lot to do with that. Here's Brantley. He's got a man open. This is Frankie Hammond. 
Out near the 48 yard line for a nice gain. That's a pickup of 14. Will Lowry, number 29. Well, that Florida offensive line is going to have to get better. I mean, it's flat out they're going to have to get better. They need to help their quarterback. I mean, the guy started as his second road start in the SEC. He's got talent, but the experience is on the offensive line, and they have not come through in this game. Haven't mentioned, but uh, at right guard for most of the second half has been number 67, John Jalapio, in place of Maurice Hurt. And here's another friendly pass. This is Omerius Hines, tackled by Mark Barron. Well, Gators are back in Gainesville next week against LSU. And then Mississippi State, we get uh, what used to be referred to as a cocktail party in Georgia. Right. And, and you know what really strikes me now with this game like this is everybody says, oh, they're going to meet again. They're going to meet again. There's no margin of error now for Florida. Right. I mean, they can put, you know, South Carolina is going to get this big game next week with Alabama kind of finishing ball. the ball start. 73 offense five yard penalty first down think about it alabama is going to finish the last leg of the bermuda triangle with the offensive coaches petrino meyer and spurrier next week so if south carolina wins that game then you know florida that gets really dicey if they want to come back and say this is just the first of two they got a lot of work left out of the gun Five receivers, blitz coming, blitz getting there. Mark Barron, unimpeded. Yep, it was a beautifully designed blitz. Now, that's only the first sack of the game. But you would admit, right, Vern, they have pressured him all yes. game. Yes, yep. They have rocked him all game. And the offensive line has not done a good job right there. Pouncey did not come off quick enough on the blitzing safety in the nickel package. Third and 19, and another flag. Yep, illegal substitution that time. That is the call. 12 players in formation, five yard penalty, third down. Now book your travel, Mr. Danielson. Ready. We are going to Columbia. Top ranked Alabama against South Carolina, 3.30 Eastern next Saturday. And it'll begin with College football today, TIAA prep, next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern. And Steve will say, Gary, I don't know if we're good enough. I don't know. I'm just going to we're gonna, we're gonna try to chuck it around, and if we're good enough, we'll make some first downs. I don't know. He's got a pretty good running back. We know that. <laughs> you got to work on your impression of the <laughs> Yeah. We're just going to chuck it. We're just going to chuck it around. Well, that pass incomplete. More pressure. And let's go back to Tim. Well, Vern, speaking of chucking it, that's what uh, Oregon's done, and the quack attack has uh, overcome what was an 18-point deficit late in the first quarter. Darren Thomas with his fourth touchdown of the game, his third passing. That one to D.J. Davis, 45-31, to 31, the quack attack. Back to you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. On fourth down, here's Chaz Henry on to punt, and uh, Marquise Mays is the deep man this time. He... Waves everybody away from it. It takes another great roll and is down at the eight yard line. Four minutes, 22 seconds to go. Crimson Tide up big over Florida. Mentioned earlier that uh, we tried to come up with a nickname for Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson. Tracy Wolfson suggested. Fast and furious. We told Mark about it. Here was his response. I heard li thunder and lightning, but we really don't like that because we both have thunder and we both have lightning. So we didn't like that one. We didn't like the two-headed monster. But I just heard one about 10 minutes ago, the fast and the furious. And um, I'm quite fond of that one. And um, uh, I'm liking it a lot. So I think we might stick with that. I'm going to have to go over with him. We're going to have to have a little conference meeting about that. But uh, I think he'll like it. <laughs> uh, when, when, when we let Tracy tell Mark that it was fast and furious, he looked across the table and said, brilliant. A.J. McCarron is put out wide to the right. He hits in the game and he goes yeah. to the wide receiver. And here is Ingram. Can he deliver a blow? I, I think that was a little furious.
Yeah, that's Josh out. Evans. Excuse yep, me, Gary. That's all right. Coming around, following number 85. Josh Evans comes around. Going to have to go lower than that. You know, it strikes me. You know, 415 in the game. Very valuable guy here. Mark Ingram in the football game with four minutes to go. I think one of the reasons of what you mentioned, he hasn't had a lot of yards in this game. And I think Nick is trying to reward him with a few yards for his stats. They'll go from the wild card, wild cat again. And here is Ingram. Remember the last four or five minutes last week in Arkansas? They ran this play over and over and over and over. Greg McElroy's day is complete. He's a Red Lobster scholar athlete. Take a look at the credentials. Not bad. He's already graduated. He's going after a master's degree and a Rhodes Scholarship. 2010 Campbell Award semifinalist. And he is Red Lobster's scholar athlete. Their commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Alabama's General Scholarship Fund. McCarran under center. Hand off to uh, Eddie Lacy, number 42. Saw a lot of action, did Lacy, in the first two games. In game three, he fumbled inside the red zone and uh, did not get into the game last week. Heard a great story about Mark Ingram and Trent Richardson with Eddie Lacy. Mark was out on the sideline with it. Ed Lacy fumbled the fumble early in the season. And Ingram and Richardson ran out to Lacy and protected him from Nick. So <laughs> Nick couldn't yell at him. So he walked him all the way to the bench and kind of protected their guy. That's kind of funny when you think about it. Lacy is the deep back. He'll get the handoff as they work on the clock. That might work once. I don't know if that'll work. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Time. Well, next week, South Carolina will be at home against Alabama. They had an open week this week. And then they have Ole Miss, open week for Ole Miss. Then at Tennessee, open week for Tennessee. Mm, at LSU, here, huh? open week for LSU. I mean, it's just... Uh, to use so far. It's inexplicable. Yeah. Well, Auburn has one, excuse me, Auburn has one before two this this year, which is amazing. Yeah. It's just an anomaly of the schedule that six opponents in the SEC will have open weeks before they take on the Crimson Tide. In his eight losses as the head coach, Nick Saban, five of the eight have come against teams with an open week prior to the game. Mal Moore was telling us last night they've changed the rules in the conference now next year. No team will have to face more than three opponents who have an open week prior to playing. Them. Nice little deal for the offensive line there by the Nick Saban and Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, taking the whole unit out to get a little ovation from the crowd. Eddie Lacy with the carry is uh, we wind down. Back to back wins for Alabama over Florida. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by Goodyear. Well, that makes Urban Meyer 11 and 8 versus the West in his career, but 25 and 2 against the East. And that's where he's got to win to get back and play this Alabama team again. Here's McCarron. And Lacey goes right. Nice run. That'll buy him a new series of downs as he gets the first down out to the 45 yard line. Matt Elam, number 22, makes the stop. For Ingram tonight, 12 carries, 48 yards. That's fast for Furious, 10 carries for 64 yards. Really modest numbers. And and did they, did they shut it down in the second I, half? Well, I think they just lost their focus. They didn't need it, really. You know, right. they, they tried it. They were playing so much defense. Florida was going for it on fourth down every time. They just didn't have the ball a lot. Now Nick Saban and Urban Meyer will meet at midfield. They are competitors, but uh, good friends. A lot of respect between these two. Some scene 
for this tussle in Tuscaloosa. 31-6. Back to Brian Denny in a moment. 